In 1966, Ronald Reagan was the leading Republican candidate in the California governor's race. As he ascended to the national political stage and eventually to the presidency in 1980, he spearheaded a conversation about deregulation and the size, reach, and cost of government. Reagan had this to say about it while giving a well-known speech in 1966. I've been protesting the growth of government for a number of years. I've had a concern lest the permanent structure of government become so big that it would become beyond the control of Congress and beyond the will of the people. Wasn't this the admonition of the Founding Fathers that government tends to grow, to take on power until freedom eventually is lost? The fact is, and we can't escape it, only government is capable of tyranny. It was one of his key campaign promises assume, uh, upon assuming the presidency in 1981 to reduce the size and influence of the federal government and to promote deregulation in favor of a complete free market economy. But during Reagan's presidency, the Supreme Court ruled on a case that paradoxically bolstered the authority of executive agencies. That case... Chevron versus the National Resource Defense Council established a legal doctrine called the Chevron Deference, which for 40 years has likely been the most frequently cited case in administrative law. Chevron Deference basically says that courts should defer to regulatory agencies to make decisions anytime there's ambiguity in a law. In other words, rather than coming to a decision itself, the court should take the recommendation of the federal agency experts when those experts make a reasonable finding, even if that reasonable finding might be contrary to one that the court might arrive at. For example, if there's uncertainty around an environmental ruling, courts should defer to experts from the Environmental Protection Agency. The Chevron decision allowed for significant expansion of executive branches like the EPA, and it granted them far more regular, regulatory power than they had. Now, I want you to hold that thought because we're going to come back to the Chevron deference. Under the executive branch of the United States government, there are 15 departments, each of which is led by an appointed cabinet member, including the Department of Defense, the State Department, the Department of Labor, the Department of Education, the Department of Treasury, and a whole lot of others. And within or separate from these departments, there are more than 400 distinct agencies and sub-agencies that employ more than 2 million Americans, and that does not include in the military or the Postal Service. And they control massive budgets. When opponents of the so-called administrative take talk about dismantling it, they're not typically talking about dismantling the Defense Department, for instance. They're mostly talking about the regulatory bodies that they think have too much power, cost too much money, and that they believe operate without or far outside their constitutional power. These agencies are generally the regulatory bodies on which, for better or for worse, we rely upon in nearly every aspect of our daily lives. The EPA regulates pollutants. The Department of Transportation comes up with safety standards for cars and highways. The Department of Agriculture makes sure that our food is safe. The FDA determines which drugs are available to us. OSHA and the Department of Labor keep workers safe and protect workers' rights. The size and power of these regulatory bodies has, in fact, grown since Ronald Reagan argued back in 1966 that there was too much government and that it needed to be rolled back or reined in. And nearly 60 years after Ronald Reagan questioned the prominence of the administrative state, debates about the size of government, the role of government, and the nature of democratic accountability continue to proliferate, often in conservative circles, but it's taken on a slightly different tone of late. Throughout Trump's presidency, he rolled back or reversed many environmental, labor, education, transportation, food and drug, and consumer protection rules and regulations. The 2024 presidential candidate, Vivek Ramaswamy, has made the dissolution of the administrative state central to his campaign. He's vowed to shut down agencies, starting with the Department of Education, on day one of his presidency. Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene, Senator Mike Lee, and some other groups and pundits have been outspoken about the evils of the administrative state. And as conservatives have argued against the administrative state, legal challenges to regulatory bodies have started to pop up more frequently. Just in the last year, the Supreme Court ruled against the Environmental Protection Agency, against the Federal Trade Commission, against the Securities and Exchange Commission in a series of decisions that have severely limited agencies' regulatory power. In West Virginia versus the Environmental Protection Agency, the court significantly weakened the EPA's ability to regulate carbon dioxide. 
Justice Elena Kagan wrote in that dissent saying that the court, quote, does not have a clue about how to address climate change, yet it appoints itself instead of Congress or an expert agency, the decision maker on climate policy. I cannot think of many things more frightening. Last week, the Supreme Court accepted a case that has the potential to upend the entire system. The case, on its face, seems kind of complicated and relatively benign. It's called Loper Bright Enterprises, Inc., versus Raimondo, Raimondo being Commerce Secretary Gina Raimondo, and it centers on a challenge to a Commerce Department rule that requires fisheries to pay for inspectors, which again, sounds relatively benign. But when you look a little closer at the briefs that are filed by conservative lobbying groups, you'll notice that this little case brought by a fishery isn't really just about fees that fishermen don't want to pay. This case challenges the constitutionality of the Reagan-era Chevron deference, and therefore it could challenge the constitutionality of the very existence of certain executive agencies. The Supreme Court has just agreed to take up this case, and since it won't be heard till the fall, it's likely you won't see much about it until then. But this little-known case that started with a dispute from a fishery could completely upend our entire regulatory system.